of how you're basically based on your social media you're a woman who empowers other women against sexual violence and, and just to stand for yourself maybe you can tell us how all that started the story oh, well the, the post went up because of the latest wave of me too right so a lot of the people that I know were sharing their stories online as well and there's a lot of people that I know who didn't want to share their story but they had a similar story to mine so I figured eh, I can also do mine and it wasn't for anything I think it's a story that I hadn't really talked about ever and there's something about something that you keep to yourself that might have hurt you it sort of stays and lives rent free inside you yeah. and it changes the way that you are so I told the story and it was, it's a fairly old story, so it was easier to tell, at least for me. I know it's not like that for everyone else. Because it was a story that happened, Christ, almost two decades ago. And I was very young, and I've always been the sort of youngest in all the crowds that I've been, because I, I was always in a class above the class I should have been. And I wasn't doing anything spectacular. Most 13, 14, 15 year olds do the same thing. You know, holiday time comes, and you find all sorts of things to keep you outside of the house. So a friend of mine, at least at the time, she was a friend of mine, uh, told us we should go, uh, somebody's having a house party. I said, okay. It's the middle of the day, mind you. It's not tea at night. It's like midday. We're all leaving the house. We get into a job. Me, I'm a, I'm a child of the suburbs. So there's only so far I have ever been on a matatu at 13. Mm. So <laughs> things started to go from familiar to unfamiliar, but mm -hmm. you're in a group, so you feel secure. Yeah, and you're a group of women that you know of girls, right? We go to this house party, everything is fine, it's kosher. Um, and yes, there was alcohol involved. Th th that should be said, I don't want to hide the details of those things. Um, but there's only so much you can drink at that age, right? Yeah. So the, the girl who took us there, she was supposed to come and stay over at my house that weekend. Mm -hmm. Didn't make sense for us, for me to leave earlier, which is what I wanted to do, and then leave her there, then have to wait for her at some place. And this is before cell phone so it's not like I can call her and ask her when are you coming yeah. right so everybody else left that we came with and I was left with her and these people that had been otherwise fine and nice to us and it was okay they were all generally quite older but still like 17 18 half old uh, I go outside have a just to sit it's hot have some air and one of the gentlemen comes up and he's like listen um, we can just finish off this tiny, tiny bit of, it was brandy, I think, yeah. And I was like, I'm pretty much done for today, but it's so kidogo, it's fine. Cool. He goes back in and comes back with two glasses, a little bit for him, a little bit for me. And then I drink it. Almost instantaneously, I start to feel woozy. You, know, you start to feel like you're going to throw up, like you're going to pass out. So it feels like you're going to faint, but a little bit different. Yeah. And so my first instinct is find a bathroom or at least get somewhere where if you fall or pass out it's softer because I was on cup mm. so I walk in mm -hmm. and he walks me in and he walks me past all these humans um, into a bedroom it's not a very big house it's a very small house so I figured yeah the doors open life is good right so wait when you're walking past all these guys can they tell that you're not okay I don't know I wasn't really looking at their reaction I was trying to get to a safe spot like I needed a place to lie down and there was no space in the sitting room which was full so I went and I lay down and then that's now where it starts to get sketchy. Now it goes from black to memory to black to memory to black to memory. And I just remember being undressed, but I was like locked in to myself. You want to say something, you want to scream, you want whatever, but there's nothing coming out. But I could hear things and I could see things, but they weren't in continuous picture. Mm. So the fellow that walked me in was there and then I passed out, woke up and he was undressing me and I was like, okay. And I wanted to say something, but then that's when I realized I can't say anything and I couldn't move anything. I wanted to get up because if I can't talk, maybe I can walk. Yeah. Nothing. Um, so he starts to do whatever it is he starts to do. I, I, I pass out just as he starts. And then I wake up a little bit later. I can't tell you how long it was, how short it was. And that's because the door made noise. So I open my eyes and he goes out. Another gentleman comes in and so on and so forth. That happened about five times because there were about six guys. And you can feel that. You can feel the one guy coming and I can hear it. I can't feel anything. Like I'm absolutely numb. So at that point in time, I think I realized there's 
little you can do here at this point in time so you just have to wait till it's over I guess or wait until you have motion back or whatever it is but something has to change about your scenario in order for anything to happen mm. um, when the last fellow had finished I guess um, my friend walked in and uh, they were having some sort of a discussion at the door and all I heard was he was quite upset and he told her you didn't tell me she was a virgin I'm not entirely sure what that I can I can draw assumptions all day from that story yeah. but uh, why I just so she comes in she gets me dressed and we go now getting to the house we were taken through a very convoluted route which is like if I had to retrace my steps I couldn't but going home somehow when we got out of the gate there was the stage just there uh, I remember walking to the stage it was just eveningish wasn't so dark um, I get into the matatu and then I remember nothing I remember being in her house to get her stuff then I remember nothing I remember being at home I don't know how we got there I don't know where the kids came from I don't know whatever I remember being home and wanting to take a shower so I prepared myself to go into the shower and wrap my towel around myself and thinking about getting up to go and then I woke up the next morning still in my bed on on my bed in my towel and didn't think twice about it. I was like, you know, long day, long night, whatever. I still remember bits and pieces of what happened, but you push it to the back of your head. That's yeah, a later problem. Later. Uh, so I walk into the shower and I take very hot showers. So I'm in the shower and I'm like, why do I feel like I'm in physical pain? It's like I've fallen down the stairs. And from here to about just like my calves somewhere, I was covered in bruises and bite marks. So I was like, me. Was what was on. going on like I, I know what was going on but is, is it ever so necessary surely so yeah I kept quite quiet about it dressed appropriately to cover as much of that mess as possible um, next day that same day we were supposed to go and meet the same girls that we were with yesterday didn't really want to talk about it but lo and behold as we meet up and we sit they're telling me that the same humans from yesterday are supposed to be meeting us today oh. yeah no hey I was mm -mm, no so I told one other girl, she, she was now my pal's neighbor, she's a lot older than us, a couple of years, and she was absolutely livid. And mm. she was like, no, they can't be here, they can't be what? And I told her, just chill, it's fine, me, I'll just me, I'll stay candle, do my things. They came, they didn't stay for long, they left. And that was a Sunday. So on the Tuesday, next week, I walked myself to the closest to VCT center at 13 years old. And I told the lady that I needed to do a HIV test. And I mean, there's the whole thing about you have to be a certain age to do a test by yourself or whatever, but somehow that conversation didn't happen. Yeah. We just did it. She did the pre counseling, the post counseling. It's the first time I've ever heard that speech in my life subsequently since I've heard it many times. Mm -hmm. But, and I was like, okay, I wasn't really hearing it. I just wanted to know yeah, that we're good. But she gave, you issued obviously the emergency the emergency at the retrovirals afterwards because I had to tell her why I wanted the test. So I was given those, I had to go back in six months. I never did, if I'm being entirely honest, because once was enough for me. I figured if it'll, I'll know eventually, but got it for now. Mm -mm. Uh, I mean, luckily I didn't get anything, but that was that. And I kept quiet about it for the longest time. My friend went and told the girls afterwards. And she's like, oh, you know, Guess what happened last weekend? Brenda lost her virginity. Oh, that's the story. That's that the story missed. that I lost it. Like I went on a little teenage adventure and that's what happened. And I sort of let the story just slide like that because did I really want to go through the, the process of explaining? I mean, was I even sure what happened? Yeah, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. It didn't feel like memories. It felt like something I imagined. But the bruises were very real. So it must have happened the way I imagined it happened.